How'd you like our harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man, too, probably. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Right. You talk to the boss, eye to eye. Like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? Oh, say no more. I got you. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Oh, so the none of the above type, are you? I get it, I get it. I like to keep my distance, too. But it doesn't matter. It's a good thing you're doing. Thanks. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling in rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. It means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fellow. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Who he is and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. We're negotiating our share. Aye. This stuff, they already covered. It's not enough. Not enough to get ahead. More about keeping us in our place. All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board, so they could take part in the decision-making process. This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page, communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. No. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. Then how can anything ever be mine? But that's okay. We don't have to agree. The prairie is wide enough for all of us. I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties. Watches out for his own. By that, you mean corruption? By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, see? And in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. That would be a manipulative illusion. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway. And moralism is the most corrupt of them all. This man has political theory, and it has not failed him today. Sure, I've had the necessary free time. Fortunately, there's always time. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him, having command of his time is the most important thing. It all comes together now. The way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian Boyadero code, itself an appropriation of Vespertine cool. That of a noble peasant or a traveling herdsman 
true to yourself, independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. No. No. The man sits on the railing, his hands reaching far and wide, yet it feels as if he could effortlessly go even wider, if need be, an endless torrent of time. The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? What a thought! Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Mm -hmm. I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. He means a more violent faction could easily take care of such a thing. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. More old bullet holes. Half a century at least. From the revolution. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. This is bad mojo, man! Fucking horrible mojo! The end draws now! Your chest feels tight looking at them. It's closing in, caving in, ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay there? You were looking pale there for a second. What are you looking at? Remnants from the revolution. These are over half a century old. Perhaps a crime of a sort ages ago. But no, these do not warrant an investigation. Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Should we go? This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in? You're pretty sure the owner of the apartment isn't here. It's safish. 
The door is slick with rain. You don't hear any movement inside. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. I mind that a local thug is using the RCM for his busy work. But if this gets us to the bottom of this hanging, then I'm willing to look over it. On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrat we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Yes, presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. You make the call. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. The sound of the key turning still echoes in the yard. Hopefully no one heard. Good job. Let's go now. I'm sure there's nothing interesting in there. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. There might be important information in the apartment. I mean, there might. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Rivershaw got its flag. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. By old-fashioned, he means very right wing. The lieutenant does not bow to the flag. It accepts your salute with quiet dignity. of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. There's something disdainful in the way the curves and lines of the bodies were drawn. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. The owner of these mugs 
doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. This person is unhappy. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing tin soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the Whirling's container to dump his trash. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. You could ask Everard who this person is once you're done here. wondering man how can I help you yeah the janitor who gave me the key to his apartment said the guy's a bit of an asshole Like I said before, I don't know much about this weasel, but the bossman said he's a real piece of work. Thanks for helping out, friend. Draw has not lessened since no reply. The knot produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. 
You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady Brew? There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. And he doesn't care either. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? And gets over it in two seconds. Seems like it didn't really hurt him. I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Ah, yes. Your side investigation. Thank you. You've got some spirit clearing up phony drag accusations alongside this murder. I'll talk to the mayor and see if I can get you the key to the city, Harry. Now let's talk real business. Actually, Rivershaw doesn't have a mayor. He refuses to discuss it further. It's probably just a small nuisance to him. Not even a speck of anger in his voice. That's that then. I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? There is no way to sway this man in any direction. He is unsuggestible and unswayable. Just tell the truth. Just as I thought. Culturally antiquated mug collection. What a weasel. Pissing on Everard's Rainbow Coalition. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. Racist mugs in the trash and in the apartment? You guys are just light years ahead of me. I have so much confidence in the ability of your organization, I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best, helping people with the power of politics. Yes, yes. Do you think this weasel is somehow connected to the murder? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't cross paths like that. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would never complicate things for you. Believe me, Harry, he's a nobody. Just your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high-caliber case like this. But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are known to be neat freaks. I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? Of course, of course, Harry. I'm not a real police officer. You are. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild Pines, sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor? Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire? He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Santa Maritza. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. 
Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village, but the mercs and their brutality are very real. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Yes, I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. Potentially, Harry, potentially. We got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys, all ready to spring into action for their home base. There's a militant wing inside the Union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organized crime. They're like you guys. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, that sounds like organized crime. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. If he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He's not worried. He places a lot of faith in that lawyer girl. Perhaps this is a tactical error. Anyway. So they shot him. He was shot in the head before he was hanged. How odd. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I took a look into that yard. What I do know is, the case is in safe hands. If anyone can get to the bottom of this shot and hanged man, it's my two little policemen. Godspeed, policemen. How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Of course, you're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Wait, the girl by the whirling, who was keeping an eye on you, is he talking about her? I did that, didn't I? She thinks of herself as a guerrilla fighter. These middle-class kids and the books they read are crazy, Harry. 
I think she would rather be an insurgent than a lawyer. I hope it's a phase. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martin A's and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. You know what, Harry? I got a feeling they're gonna show up in full force tomorrow. The lieutenant marks something in his notebook. But of course! It's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. When you meet this, Titus, tell him about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, here's five real. I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. The lieutenant watches you pocket the banknote. He looks a little puzzled. Good boy. A real team player. Now, do you have any more questions? Was it a good talk? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And, of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left? So you have to be a social democrat? He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. Just between us, I don't care for those lefty dinks either. It's all about power, and here's how we're gonna get it. I need you to be my kingsman, Harry. And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. But, he thinks, it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm gonna hand you the keys to Martin A's, and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can, deliberately omitting things. I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth center in Martin A's. It will be righteous. We're gonna get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. On the coast, Harry, across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there, a little village they're calling it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. Water drips from the eaves. A woman looks at her freshly tarred skiff. There's a pair of cavalry boots under the fish in the box, and the wind howls like a vicious spirit. They are just gonna have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth center, designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? Am I? Harry, these people, Martin A's is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. We're gonna build a youth center there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. I'm looking out for these people. 
Not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martinez, not just the harbour. He means it. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here, you need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I heard there was some trouble with the water lock, but it should be fixed now. Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I'll know you're a real kingsman and a patriot. Yes, yes. My best men are tracking it down. What's that, Harry? You're getting a lift most certainly, Harry. Nothing br by all means, Harry. What See you soon, Debardeur. Just kidding, but not too much. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. The vows are blurred and flesh. Lower intestine? The term is metabolic and circulatory system. Fascism, Brota. Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Rivershaw's problems? Yes, them, but also wormen. Wormen, men of wur. You don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Woo men need to go back to the fucking kitchen. That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that woo men need to know their place. Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does quit stalling, Bruta? We're talking about the weakest, worst, most insane thing. The weak link. Yes, them were men. Wormen, that's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that women need to know their place. Stomach truth. You're having a stomach truth. Because you've said the hard things that others won't say, the good things, you've said them many times. Okay, yes, let's call it that. Good thinking. That sounds much better. Traditionalism. You like the sound of that. You're going to keep your vues, right? Keep your vues, Brota. For the nation, smart. Best not to mention the women too often. That's why you're the head and I am the stomach. Of course you are, Bruta. Of course. Take the legal documents out of the envelope. 
a 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings, almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into the youth center. This is either an ominous or cool architectural choice. Hard to say. My money is on cool. Looks like a cubic pyrite. I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... How else are you going to build something? It's always inconvenient to build things, and citizens inevitably have disagreements over such construction projects. But there's no other way. There is no loophole. The simple truth is, the current residents are going to lose their street access and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. I should have seen it. Everard probably has eyes on us, but we could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed. Or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. However, we'll need access to the coast before we do anything. Everard won't believe you got villager signatures if you can't even get to the village. You can try a forgery as soon as we can cross the waterlock. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. wondering man how can I right to work right to work shame on you 